Good evening and welcome to the Global Good Friday broadcast. We're coming to you from the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C., one of the most incredible places on earth that tells the story of the Word of God. Good Friday is a global vision and churches and people around the world are uniting this weekend to share the greatest story that has ever been told. You see, we have a vision that this would be an annual rallying cry for people to learn and talk about Jesus. In 2020, this broadcast came out of the pain of the pandemic and it went global in just a week's time. Over 100 million households tuned in. It went into over 120 countries. It was translated into more than 40 languages and over 130,000 people responded to the gospel. I wanna invite you to join this movement so that we can make Good Friday a global declaration that isn't just about this weekend, but it's about a bold message that goes forth around the year. Follow the prompts on the screen to join us. I'm so excited to welcome my co-host for this global Good Friday broadcast, Reverend, my friend, Ebony Small. Ebony, welcome. Hey, thank you so much, Nick. Our world is continually flooded with grim news. The nations are desperate for hope, for peace, for stability, for good news, and we have it. Tonight, we invite you to lean into worship and the speakers to finally hear some good news. I'm ready for some good news. It's going to be fun. This yes. is going to be great. And I want to invite you, those of you watching wherever you are, I want you to share this link, this broadcast with your friends. You can share the link goodfriday.com. Also on social media, whatever you're using, use the hashtag goodfriday21. Post pictures. Let's spread the news of Good Friday. Yes, and this is the good news that our world desperately needs. Now we're excited to get this party started with one of our favorite bands for King and Country. But before we start, Ebony, why don't you kick us off in prayer? We'd love to. Father, we just thank you so much for this opportunity to share your good news with the whole entire earth. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit, and we pray that tonight, through the worship and through the word, that hearts would be touched, transformed, and that souls would be saved. So we invite your presence to join us, Lord, and to guide us into all truth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Sound of sleeping, too afraid of what might show up while you're dreaming. Nobody, nobody, nobody sees you. Nobody, nobody will believe it. Every day you try to pick up all the pieces, all the memories that somehow never leave you. Nobody, nobody, nobody sees you. Nobody, nobody will believe it. God only knows what you've been through. God only knows what they say about you God only knows how's killing you But there's a kind of love that God only knows God only knows what you've been through God only knows what they say about you God only knows the real you There's a kind of love that God only knows There's a kind of love that There's a kind of love Keep a cover over every single secret So afraid if someone saw them they would leave Somebody, somebody, somebody sees you Somebody, somebody will never leave you God only knows what you've been through God only knows what they say about you God only knows how's killing you But there's a kind of love that God only knows God only knows what you've been Start over, we could start over. No, for the lonely, for the 
God only knows how to break through. God only knows the real you. But there's a kind of love that God only knows. The Good Friday broadcast is presented and powered by Pulse. Launched through a university paper by evangelist Nick Hall in 2004, the Pulse team leads live events and digital campaigns around the world to reach the next generation for Jesus. Find out more about Nick Hall and the Pulse team at Pulse.org. What a powerful song. I don't know about you, but the last year has been pretty tough for people around the world. And our first speaker, actually my co-host, Ebony Small, wants to bring some encouragement and perspective of how God brings good news to the weary. I want you to join me in welcoming back to the stage my friend, Ebony. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30 say this, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle, humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When I was growing up, I knew that if I had a need, I could go to my mom or I could go to a family member to have that need met. Whether I was feeling sick or if I was feeling hungry or if I needed wisdom or guidance, there was always someone external to me that I could go to. But as I got older and started to deal with the issues of life and the stressors that come with life, I increasingly began to experience that I was yearning to go to someone to help me navigate the things of this life, but their words would give me a bit of solace, but it wouldn't give me that permanent peace of feeling like the matter had been resolved. I was learning that as I was getting older, there was seemingly like a loss of control of my circumstances, of my ability to control my reactions and how I responded to various different things. I understood the difference as I became older, that there was a difference between the words of man and then the voice of God. I realized that I had to invite Jesus into my life in order to allow his words to penetrate me in a way that would forever change my life. See, I had heard so much about this name, Jesus. I had heard so many talk about who Jesus was to them. And I had a very abstract view of Jesus. I knew that he was God, but I hadn't yet come into the understanding that he could be my God that he could become my father, that there was a level of intimacy that I could experience with him that I could not experience with others. In these verses of scripture that we just said, Jesus invites us to take his yoke upon us. And if you look up the definition of the word yoke, or even if you would get to search it and see an image of it, it's actually a cross piece that is fastened on the necks of two animals attached to a plow or a cart for them to pull. And I find it so interesting that Jesus doesn't just say, take any yoke, but he says, take my yoke, which also means that there are other yokes that we can take. There are yokes of despair, there are yokes of idolatry, there are yokes of bondage, there are yokes where we find ourselves putting trust in other things and not putting trust in God. But in this scripture, Jesus is saying to us, take his yoke upon us because his burden is easy and it is also light. His burden is life-giving. His burden allows us to be filled with so much joy. His burden is one that we can carry from the inside out. See, as I talked about from the very beginning, when I was younger, people could meet my needs because they were seemingly sometimes smaller needs. But as I have entered into this place of faith, there is only one that can truly meet my need where it satisfies my, satisfies my soul and where it allows me to come to a place of having rest. It is Jesus alone. When I take upon his yoke, the yoke of his salvation, the yoke of his love, the yoke of his compassion, and the yoke of his care. It's good news for the weary, for those whom are burdened, and those who feel like they don't know what else to do in their life. 
I remember as a young adult, when I was about 25 years old, my life was filled with so much uncertainty and I actually even found myself depressed. And even though I lived in a house full of people, I felt incredibly alone. And no one told me how I could cure that loneliness, but something within me led me to find that one person that I knew could only cure my heartache and that was Jesus. And I simply asked him in those moments to draw my heart closer to his, to allow him to become one with me, to be my father and to be my God and to cure the very burdens that were weighing my life down. See, it was Jesus in those moments that met me in that place of brokenness where the words of man couldn't penetrate my soul. It was Jesus who penetrated my soul. There's something about when Jesus speaks to you that it satisfies everything that is within you, that it gives you a peace which surpasses all understanding and it causes you to know that he alone can rescue you and he alone can save your soul. This word is good news for the weary, for the one that feels like they are at the end of their rope. They've tried everything else and talked to everyone else, but you haven't yet tried the very one whom can satisfy your soul and he is Jesus. And so I invite you as you are listening to the words that we have the opportunity to share with you tonight, that where you have put your trust in so many other things that are seemingly disappointing you and not satisfying you, bringing you to a little place of fulfillment, but not the total fulfillment, that there is a fulfillment that can enter your soul, that can deliver you from weariness and that can give you rest. And the rest of God is not just going to sleep at night, but when you enter into the rest of God, it's a supernatural state of peace where you have this understanding that no matter what is going on in my life or in my world, everything will work together for my good because my God is Jesus. He is the beginning and the end of everything that I am. He is my healer. He is the one that forgives me and he's the one that saves my soul. Everything that I could ever need, someone to comfort me, someone to assure me, someone to love me, we can find, I found in Jesus. So the invitation to the weary is to just come, come to this God, to this Lord who is living and not dead and whom can give you rest. Come to relieve yourself of the weariness that you feel. Come to relieve yourself of the burdens that you have carried for so long. Come to find healing from places of sickness. Come to find healing from places of deliverance and brokenness. It is this Jesus that brought the course of Calvary just for me and just for you who invites us tonight to simply come, to invite him into our heart and to allow him to place his yoke upon us, which is easy and which is also light. This is good news for the weary and it is good news for the brokenhearted. It was good news for me then and it is good news for you now. So just accept this invitation that God would extend to you. Just come to him and no longer find yourself weary, but forever enter into his rest. God, we thank you that we can come to a God who is living, who knows every temptation that we might ever face, who knows everything that we could ever experience in this life and knows even the brokenness that our souls experience at times. Father, tonight, my brothers, my sisters, we enter into the invitation that you have given unto us to enter into the space of rest, that our souls would no longer be weary and that we can be revived and renewed in you. Thank you for this good news that we no longer have to be weary, but that we can be restored. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Life is full of normal moments. Here, there, watching, waiting. But within every normal moment, there is a possibility of so much more. Something extraordinary. This is why we created the Move app, to help you take ordinary moments and turn them into opportunities for moving closer to God and moving closer to others. The Move app is filled with scripture, teaching, video, and audio from key artists. 
There's no time like the present. Your phone and a couple of friends is all you need to start. So if you're ready to turn a few normal moments into something that really counts, then it's time. It's time to make the first move. If you just responded to the gospel, we want to celebrate with you. Right now, there is a party going on in heaven for you. And we are so excited. I want to encourage you to follow the prompts on the screen so that our team can help you on this journey because you are not meant to go it alone. I also want to point you to the Move Closer app. This is in the App Store and it's an opportunity for relationship on mission where we can come together with others and learn what it means to follow Jesus and be connected to scripture and community. Also, I want to keep reminding you to share what's happening right now on social media. Tag us, post your picture, use the hashtag GoodFriday21. And now, we want to go back into another powerful time of worship with Carrie Job and Cody Carnes. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face towards you and give you peace. We receive.
I'm so excited that you're joining us tonight, and I'm so excited that we get to share the story of Good Friday with you, that 2,000 years ago, God came down in the flesh, and literally the Bible says that God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were sinners, while all of us were wayward and going our own way, that Jesus came and died for us. Jesus himself said, for God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, that whoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now here's the thing, you may be watching this and you may be feeling guilty, you may feel some shame, because listen, none of us are perfect. We don't put on this program because we have it all together. We put this on because there is somebody who does. You see, the Bible says that all we like sheep have gone astray. Each of us have turned to our own way. All around the world, people try to be good enough to get to God because all of us have a prodigal story. Prodigal simply means that we've rebelled and wandered off the right path. You maybe experienced this. Maybe you have a good family name and you've done some things that make your parents ashamed of you. We all know what it's, what it's like to disobey, to feel like we're in trouble, to feel like there's a sense of wrath or guilt hanging over us. You see, the good news of Good Friday is that Jesus came and he paid the price of our guilt, of our shame. You see, Jesus tells a story about the heart of God when he tells the story of this guy he calls the prodigal son. He says there was a father who had two sons and one of the sons said, Dad, I want my inheritance now. I want to do what I want to do. Now, in biblical times, if you were to tell your parent you wanted your inheritance, that was basically you telling them, I wish you were dead. So this was a very disrespectful, even controversial thing that was going on. Jesus' disciples and the Pharisees who were hearing, they would know this and think, man, this guy, he is not treating his father as he should. Well, in Jesus' story, this young son goes off and lives a life of wild living. Now, in America, where I'm from, there's a place called Las Vegas. And people go to Las Vegas when they want to go a little wild. In fact, there was a saying that said, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Now, you used to go there, you could escape. People would drink and party and do all these things. In Jesus' story, it's as if this young son left his home, left his legacy, and went to a place like Las Vegas where he could party and do whatever he wanted. But the problem was he only had so much money. And when the money ran out, the friends ran out. The women ran out. And all of a sudden, he found himself at rock bottom. Now, I don't know where you're at watching this, but I imagine there's some people right now hearing my voice, seeing my face, and you are at a broken place in your life. It feels like everything has fallen apart. It feels like your plans, your dreams have fallen apart all around you. And maybe you're like this son in Jesus' story. You see, Jesus said he got to the point where he was literally having to work with pigs. And one day, he wished that he could eat the pig food. And it says, Jesus said, the man came to his senses. Now maybe that's where you are. Even as you're watching this, you're feeling a pulling and a stirring that there is more for your life than what you're living right now. And I want to tell you that that's the truth. God made you for more than this world can ever offer you. The world tries to trick us, make us think that money will make us happy, relationships will make us happy, that partying will make us happy. But the truth is that only God will satisfy you because you have a void in your heart that only he can fill. But we've all done wrong. We've all messed up. So some people say, how could God love someone like me? Well, I want to introduce you to Jesus. Because the story of the prodigal son, the good news of the story, is that that son decided to go home thinking, if I could go home, I could be a servant for my father. Even a slave for my father would have it better off than I do. But while he was a long way off, his father 
saw his son coming in the distance. And something that was very controversial, very crazy for this time period. Jesus said the father saw the son from a distance and ran toward him. I want you to imagine a grandparent sprinting. I want you to imagine a person who wouldn't normally run. They're going to get their clothes messed up. They're going to get their shoes messed up. This father was sprinting to his son. I'm sure the son thought that maybe his dad was going to hurt him, right? He had done everything wrong and he deserved judgment. But Jesus says the father doesn't hurt the son. The father embraced the son. In fact, the artist Rembrandt drew an amazing painting called The Return of the Prodigal. It's my favorite painting, and I've actually seen it in St. Petersburg, Russia at the Hermitage Museum. You see, the good news of Good Friday is that God the Father loved you so much that even though you deserved wrath and judgment, He sent His Son Jesus to take the penalty for your sin. The Bible says that we are all guilty before a holy God. That whether we've lied, whether we've cheated, whether we've stolen, we stand condemned and convicted before a perfect God. But God loved us so much that Jesus paid the price for us. And so the good news for you right now is that you can turn to Jesus. You can surrender to him right now. In fact, I want to lead you right now in a simple prayer. It's a prayer where you're just inviting Jesus to be the leader of your life to forgive your sins and literally take over. You see, something happens when we invite Jesus in. Life begins to change. But you and I, we need to admit our sin to repent and turn to God. I want you to pray with me right now. Dear God, I need you in my life. I repent. Forgive me of my sin. I believe that you, Jesus, died on the cross and that you conquered sin, death, and the grave, that you're alive. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Be the leader of my life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Wow, what an incredible anointed message from Nick. There is in fact good news for you. And again, I wanna just remind you to text Jesus to 73738 if you've just made a decision to follow Jesus Christ. Our team will be ready to help you on this journey that you are not meant to go on alone. Now let's get back into some worship with the amazing artist, Tasha Cobbs Leonard. There is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain You said there is power, come on! There is power in the name Do you believe it? Say there is power. There is power in the name. In the name of Jesus. Say there is power. There is power. It's in the name. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we know where it is. To break every chain. Break every Woo! chain. Break every chain. Oh, I feel the power of God. Say to break every chain. To break every chain. Yeah, yeah. There's an army rising up. And we won't keep silent. You say it, say There's an army rising up. Yeah. There's an army rising up. Yeah. Break every chain. Break every chain.
Life is full of normal moments. Here, there, watching, waiting. But within every normal moment, there is a possibility of so much more. Something extraordinary. This is why we created the Move app, to help you take ordinary moments and turn them into opportunities for moving closer to God and moving closer to others. The Move app is filled with scripture, teaching, video, and audio from key artists. There is no time like the present. Your phone and a couple of friends is all you need to start. So if you're ready to turn a few normal moments into something that really counts, then it's time. It's time to make the first move. Man, what a great night. I hope that you're challenged and encouraged, not just to watch this program, but to move closer to Jesus. In fact, that's why we have the Move Closer app, because we believe that God intends for us to move closer to Him while we move closer to the world around us. If you download this app, I wanna tell you, there's albums that contain scripture, devotional content, and discussion guides to help you talk with your friends about things that matter most. You can invite people in your life to go through the journey together as you move closer to each other and ultimately experience the community that you were made for. I wanna encourage you to get started by downloading the Move Closer app in the App Store today. Also, I wanna ask you, if this program has impacted you, we wanna encourage you to invite your friends to be part of it as well. You can see the program and share it to other people at goodfriday.com and it's in over 40 languages so people around the world can experience it for themselves. Finally, make sure you share your experience on social media. Use the hashtag GoodFriday21. Up next, we have speaker, author, and pastor Francis Chan coming to us from Hong Kong. Will you join me in welcoming our friend Francis Chan? Well, it's Good Friday again. And I think that is the challenge for those of us who have been believers for years. Uh, something so sacred as it happens again and again and again, it, we have this fight. There's this fight where it's like, God, I don't want this to be common. These are sacred, sacred truths. This is a sacred time. I mean, we're talking about the Son of Almighty God dying on a cross. And, and, and if we're not careful, we can make the, you know, the common, the, the mortal, the things that are going to pass, we can elevate those things and we can take the truths that are so amazing and sacred and eternal and we can almost downplay them to where here we go again and suddenly we find ourselves more excited about, uh, I, I've done this, I'm, I'm more excited about a a basketball game than I am about taking communion or I'm more excited about Super Bowl Sunday than Easter Sunday because here we go again. And, and as I lead into Good Friday, you know, there's this pressure of, oh, I don't want this to get old to them. And so speakers and pastors, we try to come up with more creative ways to make the message new. But is that really our job? Is to think of a new way to present these sacred truths or is it just begging God to put a new awe in each of us over these truths that are timeless and ought to be holy and then like anything else in our lives. And so I wanna read from Ephesians 2, and I wanna take my time through it because this is sacred. And sometimes we can get more excited about a sermon than scripture itself 
These are words from God. This is living. This is active. This is powerful. Ephesians 2, starting in verse 1. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Does that still ignite something in you? Is there an excitement right now? I mean, do you wake up in the morning and go, God, oh, I can't believe who you are. And you thought to make me, you have me alive right now. You created in me, you created me in a way that I could be one with you, the creator. And, and you suffered. You suffered so that we could be, become one. Like you desire me and you would suffer like, a tremendous suffering so you could be one with me. Man, what do I have to complain about? What, what else do I want to rejoice about? Man, do you live your days in awe of this? Is it, if is it still an honor to take the bread and the cup? God, give this to me. And, and there's so many days when I, I just wake up and I'm in awe as I begin to pray and think of these timeless truths. I just stare at him and go, God, you've got to be kidding me. You did that for me. And then I think, how many people wake up every day with zero understanding that they're not alone, that here's the greatest, most precious truth in my life. This is why I love life. And it is so far beyond everything else, my marriage, my family, um, what I do for a living. It's, it's like, gosh, to know him and to be forgiven by him, it, this is everything to me. This is my foundation, this is my anchor. And then there's all these people that don't have a clue, that just live each day just thinking about themselves, unaware of the rest of the world. And so as we celebrate Good Friday, I just really encourage you, number one, 
Don't look for a new presentation that's cooler than the other ones. Have a new awe in your heart and your spirit over the timeless truths. And then ask God to give you a burden for those who don't know this God like you do. The Good Friday broadcast is presented and powered by Pulse. Launched through a university paper by evangelist Nick Hall in 2004, the Pulse team leads live events and digital campaigns around the world to reach the next generation for Jesus. Find out more about Nick Hall and the Pulse team at Pulse.org. What another powerful message and sound reminder that that word was. Thank you, Francis, for pouring into us. If you made the decision to follow Jesus at any point tonight, please text the word Jesus to 73738. Our team is ready to help you take your next steps. Well, I can't believe it, but we are almost done with Good Friday this year. God has already done so much and we are blown away by everyone who has been impacted by the gospel in this last hour. Before we end the night, let's enter one last moment of worship together with worship artist Michael W. Smith. So this has been a year that we'll never forget and um, so many unanswered questions. I think about Jesus on the cross when he said, Oh God, why have you forsaken me? And I'm sure that there are many out there who have asked the same question. Why have you forsaken me? Where are you in all of this? I'm not certain that I can answer all those questions. I believe he's in the middle of it on probably so many levels, more than we even think. I do know one thing for certain, even what the enemy means for evil, he turns it for even in the valley, he's working it for a good. There is strength within the sorrow. There is beauty in our tears. And you meet us in the morning. With a love that cast out fear You were working in a waiting You're sanctifying us When beyond our understanding You're teaching us to trust Oh, your plans are still to prosper. You have not forgotten us. You're with us in the fire and the flood. You're faithful forever, perfect in love. You are sovereign over us. Oh, your plans are still to prosper.
prosper You've not forgotten us You're with us in the fire and the flood You're faithful forever Perfect in love You are sovereign over us You're faithful forever Perfect in love You are sovereign over us Well, it's been an incredible program, and we want to thank you for joining us for this Good Friday global broadcast. Again, if you responded to Jesus, we want to celebrate with you. So make sure you text in the word Jesus to the number 73738. Again, text the word Jesus to the number 73738. We want to encourage you and continue to support you on this journey. That being said, make sure you download the Move Closer app in the App Store where you can learn about God's Word and how to have intentional relationships going after God and growing your faith with others. Finally, make sure you're posting on social media. Use the hashtag GoodFriday21. Post your picture of you and your friends watching the broadcast celebrating what this Good Friday is all about, Jesus. Last thing, I want to encourage you to join this movement. Good Friday is a result of the global church uniting together. And so whether you want to pick up some Good Friday merchandise, whether you want to join the prayer team, or whether you want to give to underwrite the cost of next year's broadcast, I want to encourage you to text the word JOIN to the number 73738. Thanks for joining us tonight. Happy Easter.